All right, so what we want to look at now is how we might publish information about the API that we've built, the REST API that we built. And we can have, an, uh, we can have documentation that shows up online so that when um, someone hits our site that it would show um, exactly what functions were available and how to call them. So there's a couple of different ways to do this, but basically what we want to know is things like what body do we send in and what does this API actually look like. So we're going to start that by looking back at our project. Now remember that we created this as a web API empty project. We didn't include MVC, so there aren't any web pages in here for us to display. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to add the um, ASP.NET has a built-in help capability for Web API that will generate the help pages for you. So that's the first thing we're going to do is add that. We do that by going to the Tools menu, to the NuGet Package Manager, to the Package Manager console. And that'll start up. And when it does, what we want to do is type install package microsoft.aspnet.webapi.help page. So this will actually install the code that we need and some static web pages. And it will create those pages in our project for us automatically when we do this. So we'll just go ahead and hit that. Uh, NuGet is a way to basically take any of your projects and add features into it. It'll go down, it'll go download the latest and install it for you. That's what this is doing right now. So it successfully installed that. Now every project that you have you would have to do those same steps for. All right, next we go to Global ASAX here, and we need to add, we need to tell it to use these help pages. These help pages showed up under the areas right here. You'll see help page. It has its own model view and controllers, um, which are MVC based, which we did not include. So we're going to tell it to use those. And we start by saying using system.web dot mvc because we're going to use a method and a class and a method from that and it is area registration dot register all areas and that will cause the routing to pick up that page and know about it and so now if we run this We still see the same page that we saw before, but now there's an option for us to get to help. So when this comes up, it started up the web server, and we just put help on the end of this and hit enter, and it'll go pull up that web page that we just added. So what it does is it goes and reads the controllers that you've built and it builds out all the documentation for you. So you'll notice here's all of the calls that we've implemented. Here's the get call and it'll show you samples, it'll show you XML, it'll show you all kinds of information about this, how to call it. What you'll notice over here in the description, however, is that it says no documentation is available. So you can actually create custom documentation that will show up here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So what happens is the custom documentation will end up in its own XML file. And then when that help page is brought up, if you have that XML file configured, it'll merge that in with the standard um, help that it generated by just looking at your controller. So here's our controller and here's all the different API calls that we can make and so what we're going to do first is we're going to 
go into the help page area so under areas help page app start help help page config and what you'll notice down here is it says uncomment the following to use the documentation from an XML file so we're going to uncomment this the the XML is going to show up in the app data folder and we want to change this name to be the same as our you can either make it the name of your controller or the name of the project so I'm going to do simple rest API Simple REST server, I mean. Oops. So we'll type that in. So it will create that file. Um, well, actually, what it does is it looks for the it looks for the app it looks for the simple REST server XML file, which is your custom help in the app data folder. So that file doesn't exist yet, and I'll show you how we're going to get that to be created. Um, now let's go into our controller and add some comments. So I'm going to take our controller and I'm just going to show an example of how we can do this. So it's really easy to do. You just, in the comment area right above the, the, um, the method for the, the H, for the rest verb, just three slashes will create a summary comment and then here you can say something like get all persons and then down here we can say get a specific person by ID and I'm not going to take the time to fill all that in but you can get the idea where you can put all of your your documentation in here so when we build it's going to go through and it's going to look for those and add those into the XML file then that XML file will get merged with the other standard that it uses to go pick up the information out of the controller, it merges all those together and displays them. That's what's going to happen. So we've added the summary con comments. Now what we have to do is add a post build step to actually have this file get copied into the app data folder the way we want it to. So I'm going to save these files that we worked on and we will go and create a post build step. So we can right click on the project, select properties. There's actually two things we're going to do in here. Under build, we're going to come down here and tell it that we want to generate XML and we want it to be in this simple REST server XML. So all you have to do is check that. So we'll save that. And then in the build events, we're going to have a post build that happens here. And it looks like this copy dollar solution that's a variable environment variable that's known simple rest server backslash bin and this is this is the default of where this is going to go so when it when the help system goes and builds that standard H, or the standard XML that we looked at, the standard data, help data, it puts it in this bin folder. That's what we checked over on the other option. And what this is going to do is copy that over into the app data folder. So every time we build, it'll just regenerate and copy that file over. So all that's doing is just saying, go ahead and copy this in. And it's project DIR. Let's just look at that real quick. So it goes from the solution to the project. It will also be available. Um, by doing this, we're going to make this available so that someone could pull this down and then use it to generate objects on their side when they start calling it. We're going to talk about how we call these through code. Um, later, not in this video, but in a coming video. You may have to change the permission on the app data folder for this all to show up, but let's try it. If you do, you'll need to grant permissions to the ASP.NET user to read from the app data folder. 
you'd have to do that in production because by default that doesn't uh, the ASP.NET user would not have access to that so let's type help again here and we should see a merging of the standard help that was generated before and our specific comments which you see those are now in here and that's all there is to it that's how you can do both the standard help pages and then also you can create your own um, you can create your own information here you'll notice that it filled it in here as well and that's all there is to it it's pretty simple pretty easy to build that documentation you should always have the documentation on your API it helps other people be able to use it and know how to use it.